Welcome to a tour of it on Twine. In this video, I'm going to show an extended example of working with the drop down and checkbox macros in Harlow 3.3. So now, as we previously seen, we can work with the drop down macro when we want a list of things and a user or player to choose one, or if we want a yes or no, true or false, we can use the checkbox macro. So let's pretend for a second. Let's pretend for a second we want to order pizza. In this case, we want to choose between a number of different things, yes or no, true or false, and then we want to pick one of a list. So if we're thinking about ordering pizza, for example, then we might have a number of different toppings that would be yes or no. So yes to pepperoni, yes to supreme, yes to Hawaiian ham and pineapple, and yes to meat lovers. It could be potentially yes to all of those, or yes to some of them, or no to some of them. In which case, the checkbox works very well. And we would bind notice to individual variables. So in each case, we're getting yes or no, or what we might call in a more technical context, true or false. Alternatively, if we're choosing between crusts for pizza, we generally don't mix them. We have one of a set. So in this case, we have thin, stuffed, or pan of our three different options. We're choosing one from a set. So the drop-down macro is particularly useful in that regard. Now I'm also mixing in a number of different text presentation symbols here. For every use of the asterisk right here, I'm creating a list of things that a user or player might choose from. And then down here, I am using link rerun and then a series of if macros. In each case, I'm using the checkbox emoji right here, the corresponding name. So if this is true, if this is true, if this is true, or if this is true, then it will show these if any of them are false, that is, we did not check those boxes, it won't show them. So let's go ahead and start the story and then I'll review what's going on here. So notice we have a pretty simple presentation. We can choose one or more pizza toppings, again, potentially all of them or some of them or none of them. So pepperoni, supreme, ham and pineapple and meat lovers, quite a lot of things, toppings here. And then we can pick different crusts, so stuffed or pan or thin, and submit our order. And notice we have pepperoni check mark, check mark, check mark, check mark, you chose crust pan. So what if we unclick all of these and over here, choose a different crust, click submit, and now we're just getting crust, uh, stuffed crust with no pizza toppings. But notice in each case, if it was a yes or no question, if we can phrase it that way, then we're using the check box macro. If we're picking something from a list, we're using the drop-down macro. These again are presenting data in different ways, one from a set or yes or no. So coming back over here then and just reviewing, notice for anything we can phrase as a yes nor question or a true false question, do you want pepperoni or not? Do you want supreme or not? That is something we would use the check box macro for. Alternatively, if we're picking something from a list where we only can have one thing from that list at a time, we want drop down. Checkbox for yes, no, drop down from one from a list. And then we can already come back to our knowledge of the if macro. If something is something else is true, we can show something or alternatively, we can mix in the else macro as well. So a somewhat simple example, but applying the two concepts we have now seen, using again, drop down for a list of things and check box for a yes or no, true or false setup. And this is a pretty good setup here for pizza toppings or choosing equipment or any number of other things where again, something from a list or yes or no, true or false, depending on the macro we want within Harlow 3.3. Thanks for watching.